the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante. And back in 2013, when it was becoming pretty obvious that the cloud was going to have a major impact on our industry, the IT industry, I wrote at the time that the way incumbents were going to have to compete was to really go into vertical markets and build ecosystems for their own clouds. And that's exactly what IBM did uh, late last year when it announced a major partnership with Bank of America and the financial services cloud. And guess what, Hillary Hunter is back in the house. He's the vice president uh, and CTO of the IBM cloud and an IBM fellow. Hillary, great to see you again. Thanks for coming back on. Thanks so much for having me again. Always a pleasure to be here. So we had an awesome conversation at Think. We got into the, the FS cloud a little bit, uh, but you know, as I was saying, uh, you guys announced you know, last year, Bank of America, um, but let me start here. What, what, why does the industry need a financial services cloud? Yeah, you know, it's it, it, it it's key that we ground ourselves in that question of why a financial services cloud. And I, I think it really goes back to the sensitivity of the workloads and the data that that industry stewards. The financial services industry stewards the data of millions and millions of customers. And they are heavily regulated because of that. Um, and they um, handle very high value transactions. And being able to take that context and translate that into what does it mean to do high value transactions, sensitive data, consumer data computing, also with all those benefits of elasticity and the value proposition of different deployment locations is really what financial cloud is about. And those needs of that industry are a little bit different. Um, the regulations are higher, the bar on data protection is higher, um, and the need to interlock across workload characteristics and uh, the cloud deployment is, is a bit different. And so we are bringing what we know about that industry to bear in the context also of cloud computing. Okay, so you're making some, some new announcements. There's some hard news here. Uh, but I want to know, what's, if you're a, an executive uh, or business leader in the financial services industry, what's in it for me in these announcements? Yeah, what's in it for you is that we are moving into the next phase of financial services cloud in making the policy framework that has been developed through an enormous amount of work available to um, additional industry participants. And we're also moving into a phase of global expansion. And so um, being able to take this value proposition of an end-to-end -end considered secure and compliant environment for financial services, um, out to more players in the industry, out to additional uh, geographies um, and deployment locations um, is an exciting moment because everyone's really not looking just for a cloud, but they're looking for a choice of deployment locations. They're looking to move more workload to the cloud. And this is really about providing a cloud solution that more workload can move to, not just the first couple phases of you know analytics and things like that but also moving into more transformation of the core of banking and the core of banking business um, so it is about getting more workload to the cloud getting that done faster and getting it done at a net improved security and compliance posture got it so i want to ask you about some learnings now you got, you got the double whammy of learnings here when you announce a collaboration with with b of a obviously one of the top banks in the world um, you've obviously made some progress since then, but the other, the other part of that whammy was COVID. So what did you learn from the collaboration with B of A and have you guys sort of, how have you expanded your thinking, you know, uh, uh, BC uh, bef from before COVID versus AC after COVID? Yeah, you know, the initial motivation for this program was about having trust and transparency in public cloud and having a public cloud suited also to sensitive uh, and even core banking workloads. And we have seen this conversation and the need for it and the urgency for it only pick up since COVID. Um, you know, a lot of things in the world kind of took a pause, but cloud computing really accelerated. Um, we're seeing that you know businesses need to digitally transform their banking. So core banking transformation is a very hot topic. Um, they need to deal with elasticity. We worked with banks during COVID that were having to suddenly stand up, you know, their national equivalent of the payroll protection program. Um, banks that had to suddenly have three times the elasticity because all of a sudden consumers were interacting with them purely digitally. And cloud can enable all of those 
those kind of things. And so COVID has really accelerated the motivation toward banking in the cloud and also toward um, core banking transformation, which is at the heart of um, setting a very high security bar in public cloud, you know, to be able to uh, also enable those kind of workloads. Yeah, so many changes as a result of COVID. I mean, the volume of loans, like you said, everything was digital. A lot of, I, I know a lot of older people that always still like to go into the bank. They'd like to see people and they knew people and people knew them. Well, they had no choice but to go digital. So, so that, that's huge. If you didn't have a digital solution and, and the cloud is a fundamental in that equation, but let's get into it a little bit more. And we talked a little, a little about this at IBM Think, but what are the key attributes that make the IBM Financial Services Cloud suitable for financial services? Is it the certifications? I wonder if you could add some color there. Yeah, so the, the key elements of the Financial Services Cloud program are number one, a policy framework, which is a set of controls that are customized to the financial services industry. So this isn't about some existing standard. This is a customization of controls and security for the financial services industry. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a major element of what we're announcing um, right now. Um, in addition to the policy framework is also the way that um, the different elements of the industry and of regulatory expertise are coming together. So this cloud and these public cloud offerings um, were co-developed and co-designed you know, with IBM Promontory, with IBM Security Services that work with banks, with our anchor partner, um, and moving forward, um, we'll be advised by an advisory council um, of um, CISOs who have you know, that day-to-day -day experience with security and with regulations. And so that is also a very unique context um, for not this being just a point in time with a policy framework, but being an ongoing initiative that will stay up to date um, as security concerns and as regulatory concerns change. And the third aspect is a really unique set of technologies that make all of that possible. So you have to define how the cloud is going to be secure and then you have to actually do it. And the unique capabilities that we have in IBM Public Cloud that have enabled this program include a number of things, but amongst them, uh, the industry's highest standard for data protection with our FIPS 140-2 level four, uh, based key protect service. Um, it includes uh, capabilities that we'll be releasing um, through our acquisition of Spanugo around cloud security and compliance posture management mapped back to that context of financial services. Um, and so it's really three things. It's it's a policy framework custom for the and, and optimized for the financial services industry, the forward evolution of that through industry expertise and participation of, of multi-parties in that and then core technologies that enable um, folks to accomplish that security posture through data protection, through cloud security posture management, et cetera. I forgot about the promontory. You guys made that acquisition several years ago. That's a nice little feature of the, the FS cloud. But I, I want to ask you, how, how hard is it to get these certifications? I mean, it's obviously not a layup, a lot of work, uh, a lot of time. I'm, I'm, my, I'm, my reason for my question is this, is this a moat for you as you guys start to scale? How, how difficult is it? Yeah, so um, we have you know, been putting in the time and effort, right? And so that's why this is, you know, this is an exciting moment for us with the initial work product you know, of, this, of this effort. Um, and so the, our intention really is not for that to be a moat, but for us having traversed the moat um, to now have a bridge there and <laughs> through the methodology that we built, through the control framework that we've built um, for others to now get across that moat. And so this is really about taking um, what is uh, an extensive amount of work and an extensive amount of expertise. You know, IBM Promontory, you just mentioned, but they monitor over 70 regulatory obligations in over 20 jurisdictions globally, right? I mean, this mm -hmm. is a tremendous depth of expertise. Um, and so, you know, having crossed the moat <laughs> and having built the bridge across it, um, you know, this is where we can then help um, others to, to save time in this process of, of, of adopting public cloud for further workloads. You've mentioned uh, workloads, you've talked about core financial workloads, but, but maybe give us a little insight on what type of workloads are the most suitable for the financial services cloud, because, you know, let's face it, most of the hardcore mission critical workloads haven't moved, actually, probably none of them have moved to the cloud. You kind of referenced that before. Ginny Rometty talks about that all the time, but what are the right workload strategic fits for your cloud? 
Yeah, you know, you mentioned Ginny Rometty, and so I'll, I'll take a, a, a quick note there, you know, from some of the language that you'll hear her use. She talks about, you know, there was chapter one of the cloud journey um, and stuff that was on less sensitive data, you know, analytics, some um, things on public information um, were certainly done also in finance and also in regulated industries in the cloud. And she talks about chapter two, chapter two being mission critical workloads. And this program really is the definition of chapter two for the financial services industry, right? It is the enabling expertise, the enabling control set, the enabling security technologies, the enabling cloud services for that chapter two, right? For that next layer of adoption of things that had been kept behind the firewall, had been kept in a private cloud context, um, can now be considered you know, also for public cloud. Um, and so easing that adoption, uh, streamlining that process, et cetera, is really what you know, we're looking to, to accomplish. I mean, obviously IBM, huge presence in the banking community. Is this really you know, for, for just you know, big banks? Um, what about the ecosystem? What do you got in there for ISVs and SaaS providers? Yeah, you know, you you talked to the you asked me a question at the beginning here about COVID and what's happened, and I think the transformation of of ISV providers to to become SaaS providers, um, the uh, expansion of their capabilities being needed, um, you know, in 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 payments and digital client experiences and such also for regionals and uh, second and third tier banking institutions and such is as much of what is happening right now as, as anything else you know amongst the first tiers because there is just as much pressure for transformation and digital consumer experience and other things like that also in the regionals and second and third tiers so part of our announcement um, is around uh, the ecosystem of partners that we have now for the financial services cloud program um, and that includes, you know, ISPs and SaaS providers that are servicing many different types of needs of institutions, large and small, right? So we're seeing, um, you know, those that are servicing core banking and payments, um, those that are servicing analytics use cases for this uh, industry, um, and even HR function, um, just because of that concern about, you know, uh, stewarding data well for these industries and, and, and those first tier banks. And so that transition to digital, that drive to you know, infuse AI capabilities, the need to transform uh, core banking um, is something that's very much also happening within the IC and SaaS providers. And, and we're you know, thrilled with the, the wide variety of partner base um, that we're seeing uh, develop there within our ecosystem for this program. I was talking to a CIO friend of mine several years ago, and he said to me, you know, this idea of lifting and shifting, it's fine. You get a little cost savings maybe, but unless you change your operating model and you drive an innovation agenda, you really aren't going to get the type of telephone number returns from cloud that you would want or expect. So my question is around innovation. And we've said many times in theCUBE that the new innovation cocktail, it's not Moore's law anymore. It's the combination of data, applying machine intelligence, and then the cloud. And the reason why the cloud is important is scale. Okay, there's a little, maybe a little bit of cost as well, but it's also innovation. It's the ability to attract people into an ecosystem and that resonates with line of business. If your cloud is just about you know, making IT, IT's life better, well, that's nice. But what's in this announcement and in this initiative for the line of business? Yeah, you know, it, it is all about the workloads, right? I always say that to me, the cloud journey is about, you know, number one, your platform, right? Which is the, the thing onto which you modernize, right? It is, it is what are you going to get out of moving to containers? What are you going to get out of, you know, moving to, to microservices? How does that help all of those cloud metrics that you mentioned? Um, but number two, it's about the workload, right? Which workloads are we talking about? How, with, how will they de, um, you know, uh, deliver, how will those workloads be able to, because of cloud, deliver not just TCO, but improvement in customer experience? Um, how will those workloads be able to um, meet elasticity, resiliency, cybersecurity concerns, um, changes in the way the workforce is working these days, et cetera? Um, and from the line of business perspective, you know, there is a tremendous need to consume, for example, FinTech-based innovation. Um, you know, but but a lot of folks have struggled to move past POCs because you know of concerns about security and compliance um, for those you know deployment scenarios. And so, being able to bring the ISVs and SaaS providers and then also fintechs into an ecosystem with a prescriptive 
and proactive security and compliance context is really what we're all about here. Um, and that will enable a flourishing of adoption of innovation. You know, I always love to talk about, you know, the competition uh, on, on these, uh, these episodes, uh, but, but I want to ask like differentiation. How different is this? Can I just go to any cloud supplier and get this? Will I eventually be able to? What's IBM's differentiation, Hillary? Yeah, so you want to think of it that, you know, in financial services, you are concerned and you have to be concerned about everything. You have to be concerned about things into the details of the cloud itself. You have to be thing concerned about things that are related to, uh, you know, the behavior and the, the permissions of your developers in that environment. Um, financial services cloud really has to be an end to end soup to nuts uh, conversation. Um, and so this is a program of, of our public cloud where end to end we can stand behind and provide trust and resiliency um, and this policy framework um, end to end within an environment that can be trusted for mission critical workload. And so when we look at differentiation, you know, our investments are in bringing together um, IBM's expertise all the way going back to you know regulations and security consulting that we've been doing for for decades in this industry applying that to that cloud context um, taking capabilities that are developed all the way down into the transistors investors that investments we've made even into the silicon around how cryptography is done bringing that into the cloud context and so having brought those things together into our you know public cloud context that's how we're able to solution this you know in a different way because it really is end to end about the expertise, you know, from all of that regulatory advising, um, that security context, all the way down into the silicon and the transistors. And I think that's that's a very unique value proposition as a cloud provider. Um, it's it's a you know tremendous opportunity for us um, uh, to to bring together those pieces um, and to continue to be a trusted partner to these companies that we have long been a trusted partner of. Now, of course, you guys have a relationship with VMware. You were the first, actually, to, to announce a VMware cloud relationship. And so let's say, okay, I got some VMware workloads. I move them into your FS cloud. You know, I make sure that I've got the security and compliance checked six months down the road. So I've, I've done that sort of first step. What's next for me? Is that the, is that the end or are there other things that, on my journey? Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, uh, VMware is part of, of what we are, you know, solution financial services clients too, but um, also, you know, cloud native uh, and, you know, OpenShift containerization, that modernization journey um, is an ongoing journey for, for everyone. And so, you know, kind of to your point of, of what's next, we're seeing a continual conversation um, of, you know, balancing lift and shift and modernization across, you know, workloads. And there are different reasons at different points in time um, for people to consider that. I think the key is that they trust um, where they are taking that data <laughs> um, and, you know, whatever the form is that the workload goes, um, uh, it needs to be in the context of that trust around the data and the security context. And so we're absolutely seeing, you know, everything honestly from uh, financial services institutions looking to engage with us also in our new uh, research innovation lab, um, where we're engaging directly with financial services clients that are trying to work through this, 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 you know, differentiation, right? Is it virtualization? Is it containerization? Is it even serverless? Um, what is the right and most effective, you know, balance um, of, of how workloads are programmed uh, and run for the next generation of banking. You know, Hillary, I've been, I've been doing a lot of interviews in the last decade, and I, it's been interesting to see the ascendancy of cloud, of course, but also the sort of the change in perception, particularly in financial services in the early days of cloud, folks, you know, cloud was an evil word, uh, you know, the, the C that should not be named. And so, I want to understand if I'm, and of course COVID has also changed the perception, right? Because if you weren't digital and you didn't have cloud, you couldn't really transact businesses as well. And you didn't have that business resiliency. So what if I'm a financial services person now? Okay, I've, I've, uh, I'm through the knot hole. I want to get started. Where do I start? Yeah, you know, uh, well, call us first, <laughs> but um, you know, past that, I think that, that you know the the conversations the first conversations that we're having with our clients are um number one do you have an architecture right so is cloud not just a place like i like to say um but is cloud a plan is it is there an architectural plan to enable you 
um, to have consistency, for example, in your developer experience between your private cloud environment and your public cloud environment. Um, is, is, is architecturally, are there those foundational choices around you know, common services, about being able to deploy capabilities in one location and you know, develop them in another, et cetera. Um, all those value propositions of you know, what, what we have been creating around OpenShift and cloud packs and our public cloud and consistency across different environments and such. I think that's that's the first thing to start with is is, is architecting a cloud, um, not accidental usage of multiple environments, but architecting use of multiple environments. Um, and then I think the second conversation is um, to to make a security and compliance plan that is going to be robust enough um, to withstand even the intense scrutiny um, of a regulated industry CCO and, and risk team. And so that's the other, you know, kind of foundational conversation that we're having with our clients um, and helping them with, right? So, um, you know, we uh, can provide, you know, services and reference architectures and, and all that other kind of thing to enable um, them to stabilize, you know, planning on, on both fronts, see both architecturally for what cloud means in its entirety, not just a cloud, but in its entirety all clouds, uh, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, et cetera. And then secondly, um, then, you know, a, a comprehensive security plan for that public cloud choice. And that's what we're, you know, really locking down with this policy framework um, mm -hmm. is to enable standardization on that for public cloud. Well, you know, a lot of innovation for the financial services community, which is again, your wheelhouse. I wrote a piece right around Think that IBM's, you know, future rests on its innovation agenda. And I'm glad you brought up the notion of private, public and you know, the whole hybrid thing because I see OpenShift as a key and Red Hat as a key enabler of that across whether it's cloud, on-prem, edge, across multiple clouds. That's a, an ambitious uh, agenda, you know, as somebody who, who's responsible for cloud, you know, that is something that is real innovation and really differentiable, I think, in, in the marketplace and probably pretty expensive to build out across all those different platforms. Yeah, you know, it, it is, but I think on, on the word innovation, my mind, you know, as an IBMer goes to the IBM research division, right? Um, thousands of researchers globally, and they've very much been a part of this journey with us, right? The journey with us um, um, on containerization, the, the journey on workload moderniz modernization from monolith to microservices, the journey of our public cloud, and now also uh, very much a part of our work in uh, financial services. So um, our research division is, is this uh, incredible uh, gift and asset that we have um, that is working with us also on our you know, cloud security and compliance posture management, uh, that uh, security and compliance control center uh, that we're talking about in this announcement, et cetera. And so you know, them being a part of this innovation for, uh, stream for us is, is a really exciting part again of bringing together all these different pieces that IBM has to offer in this space to make it all stack up uh, to be a, a cloud for financial services. I got a couple of little housekeeping items before we close here. Um, this is announced for the US uh, first, right? What about other regions? Is that, first of all, is that correct? And what about other regions? That's correct. And we are also announcing additional participation um, of global banking partners as well um, in this announcement. Um, and so this is also, again, uh, our initial uh, public statement of our expansion past the US. Last question. So just give us a glimpse of the future. Where do you want to be in a few years thinking about, let's say three years down the road? What's that outcome look like? Yeah, you know, I think that um, at three years uh, from now, uh, you know, we would love to see, you know, uh, uh, that people are able to uh, make a decision, you know, going back to your question about the line of business owners, right? Make a decision about what they're trying to accomplish with a workload um, and, and, and not be held back by security and compliance concerns in terms of putting that workload where it needs to be, where it will be most efficient and where it can be embraced by a set of cloud capabilities. Um, that enable it to move in a competitive pace forward, right? Infusing AI into everything that is done, um, you know, leveraging the latest in technologies and, you know, uh, serverless computing and, and all these other kind of things that can facilitate a line of business delivering more value um, so that cloud really, you know, continues, um, but also realizes its promises in that chapter two version of the story, um, also for regulated industries and also for their mission critical workloads. Well, Hillary, good luck with this. I mean, congratulations on the progress that you've made uh, really since you guys announced this late last year and really excited to see this 
start to, to take off. And uh, you're a great guest. I love having you on. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. Pleasure talking to you as always. All right, cheers. And thank you, for everybody, for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, and we'll see you next time.